Yeah, our first plenary speaker of the forum is President Yong Ah Ba of Kistet. Dr. Yong Ah Ba has been serving as the president of Kistet since 2013. She was a member of the National Assembly of Republic of Korea from 2008 to 2012, and also served as a member of the Committee on Education, Science, and Technology at the National Assembly. The title of her presentation today is Key to Creative Innovation to a Better Asia. Please welcome President Bach with a big applause. Yeah, once again, good morning, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. First, I would like to thank you, our great speaker of National Assembly for giving such an insightful and warming, um, encouraging keynote speech for the uh, first Asian Innovation Forum. Uh, I hope that as um, the Dr. Uha Jung of the Speaker of the National Assembly has said that this AIF, Asian Innovation Forum, would serve as a platform for the active communication and cooperation for Asian innovation and also a key to creative innovation toward better Asia. Today, I will begin my talk uh, with the definition and the history of innovation, and then look into different aspects of innovation by utilizing big data analysis. Then I will talk about innovation in Korea and introduce some of the key steps effort to enhance innovation capacity in science and technology field. Finally, I will discuss how the network of Asian SDI think tank, ASTN, can drive innovation and development toward better Asia. So, I am sure that we'll hear a lot of innovation from different perspectives during the next two days, but let me just briefly go over the basics. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm just doing the, in the reverse way. Okay. So innovation in the field of science and technology has greatly helped the evolution of human being. But we have to think ourselves, is innovation always beneficial to mankind? Because sometimes innovation has its adverse effect. We have to ensure that innovation in science and technology is directed to the betterment and welfare of people. Then what is innovation? There could be many definitions, but according to the OECD Oslo Manual, innovation is implementation of a new or significantly improved product, process, a new marketing method, or a new organizational method. Innovation activities include all scientific, technological, organizational, financial, and commercial steps that actually lead to implementation of innovation. As some of you may have already know, the trilateral Korea, China, Japan, Science and Technology Policy Seminar with the five SNT Policy Institute has been held every year since 2006. We will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of the seminar this uh, November. At the last seminar in Chengdu, China, I, as the president of the KISTEP, suggested to bring together not just leaders from Korea, China, and Japan, but also leading figures from all over Asia to exchange innovative ideas and development strategies. In this light, KISTEP is hosting Asian Innovation Forum to promote innovation by building networks between Asian innovators and sharing country-specific knowledge and experience. We hope to build a platform for future collaboration and move forward 
with idea, ideas and solutions to the, to the challenges we will face here in common. Let's look at the innovation from different perspectives of society. Big data analysis were carried out to understand various perspectives of innovation. Data presented here are collected from Korean news articles and the social media during the last 10 years. The number of appearance of the word innovation was sorted by countries. As expected, the word innovation appeared most frequently in the articles referring to North America. It is interesting to see that the articles on Asian innovation dramatically increased since 2012 and outpassed Europe from 2013, as you can see in the graph. This indicates that Asian countries are increasingly engaging themselves in innovative activities. Next, uh, we look at how the word innovation shows up together by Asian countries in the news article. The most number of articles on innovation was about China and Japan. Innovation in China has come to, to great attention since 2010 and has taken the first place ever since in the red graph. In the red line, the articles mentioning innovation in Vietnam are also rapidly increasing, closely followed by Malaysia, Cambodia, and Pakistan. It should be again noted that these numbers were only collected from Korean news articles. We also wanted to see how gener how general public perceives innovation. Data from social media were collected. As you can see, about 10 years ago, people thought of innovation as something new, something that has to be made from the start. Now, from 2008 to 2010, people started to think innovation as something concrete and practical. They relate innovation to product, design, and style. They thought that innovation brought different styles and new trends. More recently, people relate innovation to its effect on the society and public demand. Thus, it seems like that perception of innovation in Korea started from the vague a notion of something new, but now evolved to something more concrete, having a social influence and positive effect. Now, let's look at different types of innovation. Innovation can be classified in terms of influence. Improvement, which can lead to the change of the hegemony of the technology or industry, are called disruptive innovation. And innovation which cannot change the rule of the game are sustainable innovation. In terms of the novelty, technologies which are totally new to the world are classified as radical innovation. Technologies which are not new but better than the current ones are incremental innovation. You might think that iPhone, which is the icon of innovation, is a complete game changer in the market and something completely new. But as you can see in the graph, in the graph, iPhone is right in the middle of the figure. This means that the degree and effect of innovation can change with the passage of the time. Thus, the future innovation strategies heavily depend on the demand of society. This corresponds to what we have seen in the big data analysis uh, as well. Open innovation became a trendy term. It, it refers to the use of purpose, purposeful influence and outflows of knowledge to accelerate internal innovation. 
and expand the markets for external use of innovation. It can help reduce costs and create new revenue streams for companies while minimizing innovation risks. So open innovation could be a good way to expand the breadth of ideas, opportunities, and know-how while minimizing the technical and market risk associated with innovation. Although open innovation is crucial for Korea, which is far behind in terms of economy of scale compared to competing countries like China, Korea is not yet in the face of complete open innovation. Therefore, effort should be made to introduce open innovation in Korean firms and companies and markets also. So let me give you a brief overview on the history of innovation of Korea. As you have, seen, as you have heard from the uh, welcoming remark from uh, Zhang Mur, Dr. Zhang Muri and the keynote speech from our speaker, we have the Korea from the ashes of Korean War in 1950s. Korea made astonishing growth and became one of the most leading countries within just a half century, which is called the miracle of Han River. Korea has developed several world-class products, such as shipbuilding, automobile, and semiconductor and displays. However, these are closely followed by emerging countries, such as China, which have made rapid growth in recent years. Thus, both Korean government and the private sectors should pull together to create a new driving force for innovation and for industries. As I, as I have said in the uh, opening remark, according to Bloomberg Innovation Index 2015, Korea is ranked first the most innovative country. It is based on six criteria, R&D, manufacturing, high-tech companies, post-secondary education, research personnel, and patent. But we cannot be just excited about the result because most of the indices, indices are quantitative rather than qualitative. Thus, Korea needs to focus on enhancing its innovation capacity in terms of qualitative index also. Now, let me just give some introduction about our key steps and what key step is doing to enhance innovation capacity in the fields of science and technology in Korea. As a science and technology think tank of Korea, KISTEP is, is strengthening the capacity of innovation of Korea by supporting the whole cycle of R&D, from policy planning, budget allocation, and evaluation of uh, government research project in just within one institution with a balanced perspective. KISTEP designed and developed operation models for regional creative economy in innovation centers as well. The regional eco creative economy innovation centers are established to support the joint growth of conglomerate and small and medium-sized enterprises and the commercialization of individuals' creative ideas. Korean government set creative economy as the top priority agenda, and other major countries are also focusing on different aspects of innovation, although they refer to it as different terms. In Korea, 17 regional creative economy innovation centers collaborate with conglomerate in, in their respective fields, establishing creative ecosystem and providing more jobs for the region. Through these centers, Korea is trying to enhance both regional and national innovation capacity and create new, new growth engines for economy. In the general session one today, Dr. Song Go Han, Director of Create, Creative Economy Innovation Center of KISTEP, will introduce more activities in detail. KISTEP 
annually evaluate the science and technology innovation capacities of, OE of OECD countries and publishes, publishes cost report. Uh, five dimensions of innovation, resources, activities, network, environment, performances are uh, analyzed for the evaluation. In 2014, cost report Korea ranked seventh, moved up from eighth in 2013 among 30 OECD countries. In general session two today, Dr. Gehundo, Director of SNT Analysis and Indication, Indicators Division of KISTEP, will give you more detailed analysis about KUSTI. Following of last year's study, KISTEP is planning to conduct evaluation and analysis of innovation capacity of Asian countries. I hope that many countries, when institute, especially ASTN member institute, would participate and provide support for this year's report for uh, Asian Innovation Capacities Analysis. KISTEP is also spreading the knowledge and experience on SNT innovation policies to the developing countries. KISTEP annually hosts KISTEP ISTIC Science and Te Technology Policy Training Program with ISTIC under the auspices of UNESCO. Here, Dr. Yi He Chung of the Chairman of ISTIC um, is participating on the forum. The program aims to enhance the capabilities of high-level policymakers of developing countries by sharing our knowledge and experience in science and technology innovation. More than 130 policymakers from 43 country, 49 countries have participated in this program from 2009 to 2014. Also, we are now looking to do some more activities to science diplomacy for innovation of international collaboration. Tomorrow, in general session, Dr. Seung Jun Yu, the head of international affairs of team of KISTEP, will discuss about science diplomacy in his presentation. Finally, I will discuss how Asian Innovation Forum and the Asian STI Think Tech Network can drive innovation and development toward better Asia, and finally, the century of Asia. Through AIF, KISTEP hopes to provide a venue where STI think tanks in Asian countries gather together and share innovation experiences. Both AIF and ASTN aren't just one-time event, but are launched with a long-term vision to build a cooperation platform that will, both, that will be both substantial and long-lasting. We are launching the ASTN with the Sutton Institute participating as founding members tomorrow. KISTE hopes to ASTN to grow into a representative think tank network in Asian in Asian countries where members discuss a world science and technology agenda and collectively seek solutions. This figure shows how the Asia's share of global GDP in 1700. The GDP of Asia at that time reached 60% of the global GDP. It continued to decrease until 20th century but Asia is now becoming the center of the world economy owing to remarkable growth of Korea, China, Singapore, Middle East countries, Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Asian countries should continue their effort in promoting innovation and maintaining the strong growth momentum. And now I hope that Asian Innovation Forum would serve as a place for such effort and the stepping stone toward better Asia and the century of Asia.